one thing that can be really helpful in trying to figure out what's wrong with your program because <laughs> having stuff wrong with your program is part of programming just almost every time you write a program you're going to have errors and it's just the way our minds work we just can't completely wrap our minds around everything that's going to be going on in the program and and then our fingers you know we type things accidentally little typos and whatnot and so uh, there's going to be problems with our program so one of the things that is very helpful is to use the debuggers that are built into the IDE that we're using so the integrated development environment in this case I'm using JGrasp so in this program um, I can use the debugging tools to help me with the program. So if I say public class debugging fun and then put in a main method, so public static void main string args. Okay, so I've got my program here. And uh, let's say that um, we have a program that we want to let's say we want to um, convert let's let's do like uh, spend a little time in Brazil and uh, that I would step on a scale and the scale would tell me my weight in kilograms let's do a simple calculator to convert from kilograms to uh, pounds okay so in order to do that I need to uh, be able to ask the user for input so one of the first things I need to do is to create the ability to get input from the user. So I build a scanner and I call it in equals new scanner that's attached to the system in. Okay. And if I try to compile this, I'm going to get a couple errors. First of all, I have to save this. And it's going to tell me can't find symbol. Well, why can't it find the symbol? Whenever I get that error message, it's telling me that it doesn't recognize that word. And I'm saying, well, you should know what a scanner is, I think. I've spelled it right and everything. And then I realize I forgot to import it. So import the java.util.scanner. Uh, OK, so I've imported the scanner. And now the program compiles fine. Now I need some variables. I need one variable um, that's going to store my weight in pounds. So I'm going to make it a double because uh, there may be uh, a point something, you know. Uh, so we do that with, sometimes with weight. Um, so weight in pounds, I'll call it, and set that equal to 0, 0.0 to begin with. And I'll create one called weight in kilos. Okay. All right. So first of all, I'm going to ask the user for their weight okay and so if I do that I can say um, system dot out dot print line again we talk to the user by printing to the screen in in a real program later on what we'll do is we'll print to labels on a form instead of to the screen um, because that's how we see programming done most of the time now we've got these forms set up with little boxes on them and buttons and whatnot we click on the button and fill out the form and do drop downs and so we'll get to that later it's just that it's more complicated and so we're trying to start out simple so we're going back to the old days when we used to print out to the screen and we say uh, please enter your weight in elbs okay does it can anybody explain to me why elbs is the abbreviation for pounds um, okay so then we're gonna read that in and we do that by saying put into the weight in pounds variable whatever we read in from the scanner. So in dot next line, uh, not next line, I'd get an error here, right? Let's try compiling. I need to be better about making errors. Um, string can't be converted to a double. The line reads in a string, it reads in a word, and the weight in pounds is a double. And so I have to use the right conversion. I have to say, let's do a next double, okay? Um, so I compile that, and that works okay. So then I can say, convert elbs to kilos okay and if I do that what's the conversion well let's get a little help here from uh, a browser maybe so we say 
Google. What did we do before Google? Okay, so conversion pounds to kilograms. So it's saying to convert a pound to a kilogram, a kilogram is 0 0.0453592 of a pound. If we do it the other way around, then it's 2.20462. But every pound is is 0.8 if we go back point or sorry 0.054 53 uh, well oh, 0.453592 of a pound. Okay, so we can do that by saying take the weight in pounds well, yeah, we are taking the weight in pounds, so what are we doing to it? Well, we're going to multiply it by that number, right? But where are we going to store that? Well, we're going to store it in weight in kilos. So weight in kilos is going to be equal to the weight in pounds times 0 0.453592, okay? And then we can print the results. Okay, so... Uh, what do we want to say? System out the print line. Um, the weight in pounds, and then print out. Whoops. Uh, is, and then I'll concatenate on the weight in kilos, and then concatenate on kg. Okay, let's try it. So if I say I, my weight is a hundred pounds, then that's forty five point three five nine two kilos, which should make sense. If we go back to our little calculator, if I say one hundred pounds, then forty five point three five nine two kilos. Okay, so now here's what I want to show you is the debugging features in uh, in, in JGrasp. You've probably seen this where if you go to a line it turns into an arrow and you can highlight a whole line that way. You can highlight multiple lines maybe, maybe not. But then you get if you come over far enough you get a stop sign. And if you click on that stop sign what we're doing is we're putting a stop in the program. We won't say we want to stop the program at that certain point. Now if I just run the program, notice um, you know 150 pounds, um, it doesn't stop. If I want to stop at that place, I have to run it in debug mode. So there's a this ladybug is debug mode. So I can click on debug mode and when I run the program it will stop on this line. It stopped. This little blue arrow means I'm sitting on this line. And so how do I move through the program? How do I go to the next line? Well, what there is is there's a step for this selected thread. So I can step down and when I do that it executes that line of code. And now it's waiting for input. So I can say 150 pounds and I hit enter. Again it stopped. It's waiting. I can press the arrow to go to the next line and as I do that I can see what's in the output. I can see that right now in the weight in pounds variable there's a 150 sitting out there. That's what's sitting in memory in the the uh, weight in pounds variable. If I go one more line, notice I'm on this convert pounds to kilo line. If, as soon as I click this down arrow, it will move down to the next line and it puts that result in the 68.0388. So I can see what's in both of these variables before I execute this line. And as soon as I press the down arrow, then it will um, it'll uh, continue through the program, and I I can see that progress. So if I do this again, I can also go in and look at something temporarily. So I could say 200 pounds, and then I can step to that next. And if everything looks okay, then one of my options over here is to just go ahead and run the program. So resume the selected thread or thread group, I press that, it'll run through the program, the rest of it. So I can I can keep going at any time as I'm debugging uh, the program, but I have that option. I can step down a line at a time. Now there's some other options here. 
um, that uh, I'm not going to mess with for our purposes. Um, I don't know what this auto step does. We could try it. Oh, there's a delay, so you can watch it go by itself. Um, that must be new. I haven't seen that one. Um, and uh, auto resume. It just you can you can move through a step at a time and watch the program work. Watch what's in each variable, and that makes it really useful when you're getting an error in the code to see what is going on with the error in the code. You can do stuff like down here. If weight in pounds um, is greater than a thousand, you could say something like, Have you thought about contacting Guinness? <laughs> is that how you spell Guinness? I don't even know. What's the Guinness? Let's look it up. Guinness. Oh, two N's. Guinness World Record Weight. The heaviest person in medical history was, uh, let's see, 975 pounds. September 76. That can't be right, so let's see. Hey, oh, let's go to the official source here. <laughs> no, that is. Okay, so let's see. 975 pounds, is that? No, 1,400 pounds. Okay, whatever it is. <laughs> Random stretch here. Guinness with two N's. Have you thought about contacting Guinness? So this is going to say this line if that is true. So we can watch it work. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll take this. I'm going to take the stop off that line and put it down here on the if statement so it won't stop above that. So I'll remove that and then we can run this again so I can say 200 pounds oh I gotta run it in debug mode so let's try it again 200 pounds it's gonna stop on that line I can see what the value is and I can see that it's not going to execute and so if by chance I accidentally typed a semicolon at the end of that line I can watch this work and as I watch it work and I get to that line I'm saying why does it say it if I just run this regularly and I say 200 pounds, it's telling me, have you thought about contacting Guinness? But that's only supposed to be if the weight is over 1,000 pounds. And so if I run this in debug mode and I do that same thing, it stops on that line and then I watch it work and I see that it does go in there. It says that. And I go, well, what? That can't be right. And then I look out and realize that I've closed my if statement with that semicolon. And so this is just being executed regularly um, as just another line of code. So I've got to get rid of that semicolon and and uh, so anyway that's helpful in debugging. Now there's just other one other thing I wanted to show you. So what if instead of doing this inside the main method itself, I had a separate method called called um, um, convert. Let's call it. Okay. So I've got a method called convert that takes as, uh, I'll just do a double called P for pounds and a double called K for kilos. So it takes two pieces of input as um, to do the calculation and actually I'll do this to make it uh, official we talked about this stuff, didn't we? By this point, I hope so. If not, this is all new. Um, I'll, I'll have it return a double that represents the weight in kilos. Convert to kilos, I'll call this. How about that? So I take in pounds and kilos and I do the conversion. So I'm going to drop this conversion in here. 
which apparently was just that. So I say, take the, so actually all I need passed in is the weight in pounds, right? Not that I don't need the kilos because they're not going to know that. All they can pass in is the weight in pounds. So I'll take that weight in pounds and I'll create a double called the result and set it equal to 0.0, .0 so I can uh, pass that back. And I'll say, S take the result and set it equal to the pounds that were passed in multiplied by that number. And once I have the result, I can return the result. Okay? So again, this does the calculation. little comment there to tell me what's going on. I, I set up a variable called result. That's what's going to be returned through the method. And then I calculate the weight in kilos and I put that in the result variable and then I return the result. So up here what I'll be doing instead is saying call the convert to kilos method and pass in the weight in pounds. So the weight in pounds goes in through those parentheses and is stored in a double called P. We set that result and the result is passed back through this double uh, slot and given to the weight in kilos where it'll be stored. Okay, maybe that was a little bit confusing. And if it is, don't worry about that so much as what I'm about to show you. If I put a stop on, you can't put a stop on the comment line really. So if I come up here and I put a stop on that weight, so enter weight, um, please enter your weight in uh, pounds and I say 150 and I enter that. Now if I just press the down arrow, it'll go through and do the conversion and, and instead of going to that convert to kilos method, it'll just keep dropping down in the method that I'm in right and and run the program now watch the difference here if I do the same thing but instead of pressing this straight down arrow I press this straight or this curved arrow this is a step into method so if I type that same 150 and press enter and then I use the step into instead watch what it does it'll drop into that code and it'll go through the code on that side and then come back into the program where it left off and you can watch the program work that way to get to where it needs to get to okay so that step into is useful if you want to see the detail of what's going on with this method or any method for that matter um, I don't know if it'll do it let's try it with the next double I step into now it won't do it with the next double it'll do it with the methods that we've written um, but it'll it'll walk through each line of code and we can watch it work with the variables on the outside so that's really helpful in debugging when we're trying to do that okay so use that to your advantage as you're programming whenever you get a problem with the program that you can't figure out uh, use that debugging tool to step through a line at a time and you can put on the line numbers by the way when it gives you an error on a line you can say under view you can toggle on and off the line numbers so you can see what line you're at in terms of a number and, and that. So hopefully that's helpful to, to help solve some problems. Um, and as we get further along, it'll become more and more useful as we get into arrays. You can go check all the values in the array and watch them work. Um, it, it becomes really useful. So anyway, uh, let me know if you have any questions on anything. Thanks.